guys welcome back to my channel today we are going to be doing the long-awaited review of the makeup atelier foundation and concealer i just received the concealer finally yesterday this is the first time that beautylish has taken a week to get a package to me i always get one within two days so i'm hoping that's not like the start of something new for them but it did take quite a while for this to get to me so i just got it yesterday i've had this for quite some time i've used it a probably three or four times before I filmed this video. So this is not a first impression, this is. Um, real quick, I'm gonna go over, I have a lot to say, a lot to say during the application, so I'm gonna try to make this quick. The foundation is 1.01 .01 fluid ounce, and it retails for $32, which is mid-range nowadays for a foundation. It does come in 32 shades. The shades are very, very hard to decipher on the Beautylish website. They do give you at least some kind of color determination before the numbers, like yellow, apricot, gilded, beige, dark, and ochre. I have the color FL, FLW, 2Y, which is the yellow, the second color in the yellow line. Um, and I just kind of flew by the seat of my pants in picking this color. I do believe Beautylish does uh, samples. If you will contact them, they will ship you out samples or help you in your shade match. This is pretty a good match for me right now. Probably will be more so once I get to my very lightest in the winter, but it's just a smidge too light. Not enough to return or exchange. It claims that it's resistant to sweat, tears, and sebum, which is oil. If you have an oily um, T-zone or just an oily face in general. It claims to have very high and very long-lasting coverage with a very matte finish. All true. I will get to that more at the end of the video. But it does have a very matte finish. Now the concealer comes in 15 shades and it is only $18, which it, to me nowadays is so sad that I think that's a steal for a concealer. I just think it's a steal. I think it's ridiculous. Um, they do have better shade descriptions on the website for this as far as telling you that, say, this is this concealer is good for medium to light skin to skins with yellow undertone, that kind of thing. They do have a better description of shades in that way on the website. I just picked the same shade I had in the foundation, hoping that it would work, FLWA2Y. So crazy, but this is a Paris company Makeup Atelier Paris. Um, so maybe they just do things differently as far as their naming and numbering. But again, $18 and it comes in 15 shades. It claims to be waterproof. It claims to not crease. It claims to have a no makeup finish, meaning that you are not gonna look like you have makeup on when you're wearing this concealer. And it also can, claims to have color correcting properties in it, as well as concealing properties, which to me tells me that it's telling, it's saying that I can use this without a color corrector. Again, you'll see more in the actual demo part, which I am going to go ahead and cut to right now because again, I have a lot to say in that section of the video and then I'll come back at the end and tell you my final thoughts. So let's get right into the demo. Okay, so my skin is cooperating with me today. So I don't have like a ton of issues that I need to cover up or I don't have like dry patches or anything like that. And my redness is what it normally is. I don't know if it is transferring or translating onto camera, but I have always, since I was born, had this stripe of red down each side of my face. Um, as I've gotten older, it's gotten less red, but it's still there and very prominent in my eyes. So again, I have the color FLW2Y. Comes in packaging like this with a pump. I have already primed my face. I use the YSL Two Chiclet Blur Primer. I am going to use two pumps. So that right there is what two pumps looks like. You can see it's taking quite a while for it to actually drip down my hand. It is a little bit of a thicker consistency, but it does move. So it's not like a mousse or anything like that. I like how I said that, a mousse. It's not a mousse consistency, but it is thicker when applied to the face. So I'm just going to apply it like I normally do. This color is a tad light for me. I am using a beauty blender. Now, here's some things that I have issues with in application of this product. Here we'll see. 
right here and on my nose, which aren't even dry, it's super patchy. Just in that first application, I have tried this with a regular beauty blender. I've tried it with this Beauty Junkie sponge. It does it the same way both times. So you can even, I honestly, I wish I knew if this camera were translating it or not, but it's happening on my chin as well. So I can still see a little bit of redness. I'm just going to put a little bit more. It's just separating right here on my face. I'm going to show you on this side a brush just so you can see. Okay, so I'm using my Makeup Geek Face Buffer Brush. Now, a brush obviously, like almost always, applies a heavier coverage, but it's still patchy to me. So if I go and see when I did that with my Beauty Blender, it took it off. Took the foundation off. So when you read reviews, people are saying that it applies flawlessly. And I only saw one review on Beautylish. Now granted, they only have 12 reviews out of the 12 that said that they prefer to use a brush instead of a beauty blender. I honestly think that because it's so thick, the beauty blender would be an obvious choice. However, I have issues with both ways of applying it. I'm finishing off with the brush because I just want to show you the coverage that it can give and the Beauty Blender just is taking it away. And you can see it's a little light for me, but we'll fix that with the bronzing. And there were some streaks on my nose, so I'm just going to kind of tap that with my finger too. Now, I will say it dries down super fast and some say they don't even feel the need to set it. I just feel like it looks like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. And I don't know if that's because also it's too light and I feel like that kind of attributes to the mask like look of it. But now I'm just going to lightly tap over with my beauty blender to see if that'll kind of the makeup -y look die down a little bit. I'm scared. A lot of times I will like spray a setting spray or a fix plus or something and then tap it in, but I'm scared that will completely take it off my face. So it's not near as patchy now that I worked it in. Um, and in fact, I really, after using the brush again, I feel like to get the actual coverage this foundation claims to have, you will need to use a brush because you saw how the Beauty Blender just took the product off. Um, okay, so that's the foundation. I did use the entire two pumps. I'm going to wait to say everything I want to say about it till the end of the video. So now we're going to go on to the concealer and I am in FLWA2Y and I chose this color because... I'm in 2Y in the foundation, and I just, I honestly, I didn't know. I know the foundation's a tad light for me, so I thought, well, if this is the same as the foundation, that'll work for a concealer because I like to have lighter under eye, just a smidge lighter. But this is not the same color as the foundation. It's much more yellow, and it is lighter, so I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going to do something um, I normally would not do. <laughs> because my under eyes are so dark. It's just genetic. It's, you know, they get a little bit worse with allergies and stuff like that, but they're just dark. I just have dark under eyes. But because this can, this claims to have corrector properties, I'm going to not use a color corrector today and use this. That, I don't know why that scares me. I don't, Honestly, I chose today to do this video because I don't have anywhere to go. <laughs> and I did not want my under eyes to scare somebody if they saw without color corrector on. I'm touching my face because because I do I do feel like it's setting down very dry, like it's not tacky at all, but it is already settling into my smile lines right here. Okay, so here we go with the concealer. I'll get you up close and personal to my darkness. All right, so it just says to dot, I mean, this is so yellow. Not a ton of product comes out on the applicator, Again, this is a first impression on the concealer, um, the foundation I have used a few times before. All right, so I'm just gonna do that to start with. It says to blend out with your finger or a concealer brush. 
but I'm going to start with this because this is what I always use. Oh dear goodness. Oh dear goodness. What a nightmare. Look at that. Please tell me that's coming across on camera. All of that patchiness right there. Okay, I don't even have a concealer brush up here because I don't use them. Let me put a little bit under. So I'm just gonna take like a shader brush. Oh my heavens to Betsy, what a nightmare. What, what, what? Oh my goodness. Apparently some mascara that I didn't even know I had left has decided to make an appearance. But this is two coats, two coats of that concealer. It is so super patchy right there. Obviously not concealing my darkness. So I'm going to remove this with a makeup wipe and I'm gonna start over with a corrector underneath. Oh, even removing it is like, freaking nightmare. Apparently that mascara decided it wanted to stay for the day. Okay, I'm so determined to get this to work that now I'm going to use a beauty blender and see if that helps at all. So first I'm going to go in with the Urban Decay Naked Skin Corrector in Peach. Then I'm going to take this concealer. It's very, very watery in consistency. Like, I do not feel like, just even upon first application, that it's going to be a high coverage concealer if I can get it to cover at all. So I'm having to go back in because when I blend in the concealer with the part underneath that had my foundation, it gets completely patchy and almost takes the foundation away. So, I don't know if it's because I'm using a beauty blender, although this is only half as damp as my Beauty Junkie sponge. I am using a little bit more because that was not the coverage that I was looking for, even with the corrector. No concealer? Corrector and concealer. I'm gonna let you look at that a minute. I don't see too much difference, do you? Honestly, I feel like nothing is on this under eye. Such a disappointment. All right, I'm gonna do the other eye real quick. Now, before anybody says anything about, you didn't use an actual concealer brush. You're right, I didn't. However, on my clients, I very oftentimes use a eyeshadow blending brush or shader brush like that, and I never have an issue with it, so it still should have worked fine. Do you see that? Right there, right there. When I just applied the concealer, the foundation came off. Talk about high maintenance. Talk about high maintenance and no coverage. Good night, I'm glad I don't have anywhere to go today. All right, I'm gonna finish off my makeup. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished my makeup and I have to say I don't love my makeup today and it's not all too often that I say that. I don't know why I don't really love my makeup today. I mean, even everything that I put on top of it, like I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. I feel like this is gonna turn into one huge Debbie Downer and I may need to like put it in the title to warn people. But um, as far as the foundation and the concealer, I went in, this is a very matte finish foundation. So I went in with a liquid illuminator, which I haven't done in quite some time, but I felt like it was going to, I was gonna need it. Um, and I wanted it to kind of be a base for the powder that I used. And I went with my beauty blender to kind of dab that in, took all the foundation off. You'd think I would have learned in those 10 minutes of application beforehand that it was gonna do that, but apparently I didn't. So I had to, take my finger, I had to use the brush to stipple on just like I did before and take my finger and kind of dab the luminizer in to where it would not become patchy and take the underlying foundation and concealer off. That was kind of a pain. Um, I don't feel like it did that so much with my 
liquid bronzer per se. I didn't have any issues of it taking it off, but I used a duo fiber brush. So I think that's the key is that you just cannot use beauty blenders with this. Even though I've used this like three times before, I used a beauty blender and today has just been the worst. So maybe it was just waiting to show its true colors till I actually filmed a video on it. So the brush was fine um, using my liquid bronzer and I did douse my face in my Pixie Fixing Mist, but I think I'm gonna do it some more with this Fix Plus real quick because it is so matte. And I just, I feel like I've just grown past the matte phase in my life. Right now anyways. I'm sure I'll go back to it in like six months. But so that does help. The concealer is little to no coverage. Like I'm very disappointed in the concealer. I will say by the time I went back to set it with my Secret Brightening Powder, it had not creased or settled into fine lines. Which I guess is good. But maybe it just didn't do that because it wasn't there. <laughs> At least it didn't look like it was there. Um, so I feel like I, even with the corrector, I have some pretty dark under eyes going on today. Um, and that's probably attributing to the fact that I don't love my makeup. So I'm going to go throughout my day. Like I said, I don't have a ton of stuff today, but I will come back later on to show you how it's held up through the day and let you know what I think. Okay, so we are back. I have had this foundation and concealer on for about eight hours. I have worn the foundation, like I said, a few times before, and I've worn it for much longer than that. So I can attest to its longevity even past the eight hour mark. But I'm going to talk about the foundation first. Upon like the demo part, you would think that I like absolutely despise this foundation. I don't absolutely despise it. Um, I just don't love it. It's hard to say I've had it too long to return it. So it's hard to say if I would actually return it or not. Because quite honestly, I counted my foundations before I sat down to do this part of the video. And including this foundation, I have 40 foundations. I know that may sound very excessive to most of you, but a lot of them I have bought to review on this channel. And I'm just, I love foundation. So I don't really feel like I have to justify it. I just really like foundation. So this is not even like in my top 20. So I probably would have returned it if it was in the time allowed. And I'm gonna tell you why. I think there is a very specific area of people who would absolutely love this foundation. I think if you have really oily skin or if you have a lot of problematic areas of skin, acne, acne scars, um, active breakouts, very, very high amount of rosacea, and again, like overly excessive oily skin, I think that you would actually really enjoy this foundation. If you have dry skin, I don't think you're going to like it. If you have normal skin, which I do, I think you're going to have to take an excessive amount of prep time. Like I think I probably should have moisturized way more than I did, even though I moisturized the same as I always do. And maybe even take in the, into consideration the primer you use, like use a very moisturizing primer per se. I think maybe it would have worked a little bit better with my Bobbi Brown vitamin enriched face base. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but I'm just trying to figure out ways where I think it would actually work. I don't want to spend too long because I've already edited the first part of this video and I know that it's going to be a long one. Um, so I'm not going to do any like close ups or anything, but it just like it sits on my skin in a very makeup like way. I have too many foundations that almost meld into my skin, therefore looking like it's part of my face, that this just really is not one of them. Um, I think that any powder products that you put on top of it, for me, have been accentuated. Um, any fine lines have been accentuated. My smile lines, it definitely does sink into those. It sinks into my forehead lines, which I'm taking care of next week, thank heavens. Um, and it just looks really, really cakey on me. Real quick, the first time that I ever wore this foundation, I, kept it on when I showered and that night I had to wash my hair and when I wash my hair I shave and I do all that kind of stuff and I'm in the shower for quite a while but when I'm leaning over like shaving or whatever I've already washed my hair like water gets all in my face so I decided to keep this foundation on to see if it actually is waterproof and I got it out of normally when I get out of the shower after doing something like that if I haven't washed my face first I have like streaks you know where the water has kind of come down my face 
I'm not kidding you, there was not a single streak on my face. So the waterproof claim is 100% legit in my experience. Um, so I think that can be a major pro for this foundation. I don't want to knock it and say it's awful because I think for the right person, it's not going to be. It just wasn't great for me. Now, the concealer, I don't know who that concealer is going to work on honestly. And I, it's so crazy because I know like a lot of well-known artists really like this concealer. Um, I've, it has really good reviews on Beautylish. I don't know. I, I'm not going to even say I'm doing something wrong because it's a concealer. Like there's only so many ways you can do a concealer. And I tried two ways with a beauty blender and with a, bl a brush. And I just don't do concealer with fingers. So if that's the way it has to be applied, it's just not the concealer for me anyways. But I just, I don't know. I just, I can't recommend it. It has little to no coverage in my opinion. Um, it doesn't, once you have put it on, because I mean, I did cake a lot on um, to try to get the coverage that I was hoping for, but it doesn't look any different. It doesn't look cakey. It didn't crease. It didn't sink into fine lines. So maybe it would be awesome for someone who just doesn't need coverage and maybe just want something to brighten up their under eye because it really does not settle into fine lines or creases or anything like that. It's set really well. That part I can totally say is a pro for the concealer. I just find that it has absolutely no coverage and it was very patchy and streaky going on. So I can't recommend the concealer and because I did just get that, I will be returning it. Um, I just see no sense in keeping it when I know I don't like it. And I don't see with as much effort as I put into it today during the application is trying different ways, taking it off, putting it on again. I don't see how trying it more and more is going to make me change my mind. So I think I'm just going to call a spade a spade and just say it's not going to work for me and send it back. So I feel like this was kind of a little bit of a Debbie Downer video. I'm sorry about that. But it just proves that, you know, some things don't work for everybody. And if you have this foundation and you love it, I love that because some people I feel like get so defensive and I'm the same way like I, when some people bash a product that I love I'm like what is what is wrong with you what are, that's what like I don't get it like and I get I get kind of defensive too I just don't post a comment about it that's the difference between me and a whole lot of other people and I feel like some people have commented before about like I can't believe you don't like this. I love this. And and I am so glad you love it. I am not saying don't give this a try. I'm not saying don't call Beautylish and, and get a sample mailed to you. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying for me, as I think that you could probably have seen in the demo, it is not the best. <laughs> so hopefully this helped you in some form or fashion. If you do love it, I would like to know. I mean, I, I love that it works for some people. Um, and if you were on the fence, maybe I saved you some money. Maybe you're still going to try it. Either way is a-okay. So as always, be sure and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. I'm really, um, ramping up for my Christmas giveaway that I plan on having. So I've been posting some things on like an Instagram story and my Snapchat about asking what you guys would like to see in a giveaway for Christmas. And a couple of you have responded and let me know, but I really would like to know other people's opinion too. So be sure and follow me on my other um, social media so you don't miss out on stuff like that. But you can also put it in the comments down below on this video. Either way is perfectly fine. I really appreciate all of you. I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a very blessed day.